And one thing about all these apps, do you see how the bold font and the fonts you can click on and the kind of little subheading fonts, they're all related fonts, same family, maybe, maybe not, but they're related, they're the same sizes, they look the same, so all the apps kind of have a similar look, okay, that's because they're all using fonts properly, okay. So let's talk about fonts. Um, the most important thing to understand about fonts is that if you're displaying user content, Okay, that's the user's information. So in the calendar, that's the appointments and the days of the week and the month and all those things. Uh, in the weather, it's the temperature and the name of the city and things like that. In the ti timer app, it's the city that the clock is in. All this. So if it's user content, in other words, it's not the text on a button. Okay, it's not a text on a button that users click like edit or something like that then you want to use a preferred font, what's called a preferred font, and so you want this incredibly important method. If you, don't, if you only learn one method in all of UI font, it's this iOS 7 method called preferred font for text style. Okay, the text style argument is a string. You use a constant that you're going to look up in UI font descriptor, actually. If you go through UI font, you can link, click through and find it. And so there's the body style, so that's text that's the body the main part of what's uh, being displayed. So like in an appointment, that would be, uh, like in a calendar item, that would be the uh, actual information about what's gonna happen at that appointment. And then there's a headline style, so that would be obviously a header. Uh, there's footnotes, captions, like a caption on an image, things like that. There's about, I think, eight or so of these, and you should familiarize yourself with what, when, what circumstances semantically those things should be used in. And then when you want a font in your app, you should be using one of these, okay, for user content. Um, there's also system fonts. These are what goes on buttons, okay. Don't use the system fonts for user content, okay. Sometimes it's okay to use a preferred font on a button. It depends on whether the title of the button might change depending on the user's you know, content, it basically it's the user's content on a button, uh, that'd be okay, but you generally wouldn't want to use system fonts for user's content, okay? So this is what's on a button, what's, you know, that kind of thing. All right, um, UI font descriptor, I put some extra slides in uh, what I posted that talks more about UI font descriptor. Um, I'm not going to go through them here, you can look through them to kind of get a little bit of a hint for UI font descriptor. But the bottom line is, fonts are designed not by computer programmers, but by artists, okay? Artists design fonts, and they've been designing them for hundreds of years? Yeah, probably a couple hundred years since the letters, since the presses were made, I don't know when Gutenberg was exactly, testing my history here, but uh, those were designed, you know, back then, you actually etched on pieces of lead or whatever. Uh, now they're designed in, you know, Photoshop or Illustrator, probably type, you know, vector graphics designing tool. And um, the problem with that is that they don't fit what we computer scientists want, which is we want the bold version of this font. We want the italic version. We want the narrow version. Okay, unless the font designer actually designs a bold font or an italic font for a face, we don't get it. Okay, we don't get one of those. Um, we could try and somehow smunch it up to look more bold, but that usually looks like bad. Okay, that does not look good. Um, so UI font descriptor is new in iOS 7. It attempts to put categories on fonts that defy categorization. Okay, so it UI font descriptor has a lot of knowledge in it about faces and how, is there a bold version of this? Is there a condensed version? Is there an italic version? And so it maps that into something we as computer scientists want to do because we want to put something in bold on the screen. Okay, so that's what UI font descriptor is all about. Uh, even size, by the way, is designed into a font often. Okay, a designer of a font will design a larger S with a little more curve here and there than a smaller S. Okay, um, size is not just a matter of vector graphics zooming them in and out. Always, sometimes depends on the font. So anyway, look at that at slides that are uh, in there to try and figure that out. There's nothing you will have to do in your homeworks that is font descriptor. You might have to do fonts, but not not font descriptors. I don't think. Okay, you might want to if you want to use an advanced stuff, but. Um, so understand though that, yeah, when you do a font descriptor and you ask it for a bold version of a font, uh, you might not get a bold version. You'll get the best thing you can come up with, 
but it might not actually look bold, depending on what font it is and whether it has a bold, etc. Okay. So now let's talk about how fonts, how text looks on screen. Well, the font is a big part of how text looks on screen. Depending on which font you pick, that's going to determine a lot of what it looks like. But there's a lot of other things that determine what a font looks like on screen. For example, is the thing underlined? Is it outlined? Okay. Uh, how strongly stroked is the outer edge of the font? Okay. Those things are all kind of independent of the font. You can apply these things to any font. So, there's a new class that you're going to learn that's in foundation called NS attributed string. And an NS attributed string, very, very simple, it's like, it is not an NS string, but it's like an NS string where every character has a dictionary of attributes. And those attributes are like underlined or stroke width, the font, etc. Okay? Now, the reason I say it's like NS string, it's not a subclass of NS string. You cannot send it string messages. Okay? So that seems like a significant restriction, and it is, and we'll talk about how we're going to deal with that in a second. Um, you set the attributes uh, simply by calling, or, or, sorry, you, this is NS attributed string, it's immutable, immutable, not modifiable. So you cannot set the attributes of a NS attributed string. There is a mutable attributed string, we'll talk about that in a second. So you get the attributes by calling attributes at index, and it will return you a dictionary with all the attributes for the character at that index. And that NS range pointer, if you pass it a pointer to a range struct, it'll fill it in with how many characters have the exact same attributes. Okay? So it's basically, you specify the location of, that you want the attributes, and if a whole bunch of characters have those exact same attributes, it'll return that range if you ask it. Does that make sense? What that range is? It's basically just telling you how many characters have the attributes you asked for at that, that character. You can pass null if you don't care if you just want to know the attributes of that character. Um, so NS attribute string is not a string, so, but we want to do string-like things. We want to search for other st substrings and things like that that we do on a string. So there's a method in NS attribute string, a really important one, called string. Okay? And this will return an NS string that you can then search in or do all the string things you want. Um, for example, if we wanted to search there's a method in NS string called range of string, which returns an NS range that tells you where a substring is in a string. And so we can just say we have an attributed string lying around, uh, and we're looking for some substring. We just say attributed string string, range of string string, and we'll get the range back. Okay? Now, that string method is guaranteed to be very high performance because you're doing this all the time. You want to look at the NS attributed string, like a string, so it's high performance. However, it's also volatile. Bottom line is, this thing is probably returning you a pointer to that NS attributed string's internal data structure, or some parts of it, or something. You don't really know what it is. You know whatever it returns is an NS string, but um, so if you want to keep that thing around for more than just right there where you call it, make a copy of it. Okay, then you have a copy of the NS string, you can hold on to it. You almost never need to do that because you're almost always operating on the string right there in place like this, a range of string. You're just trying to get it. Okay? Okay, so that's string, very important property on any string. So there is a mutable one, okay? And mutable one, it, it does inherit from the non-immutable, non-mutable attributed string, but it's not an NS string or an NS mutable string, it's an NS attributed string. And it adds these methods to add attributes and set attributes at various ranges uh, inside the attributed string. Okay? Exactly what you would think. And we're going to talk about what's in these dictionaries in a couple slides. Um, now, what if you want to modify the characters in a mutable attributed string? Okay? Exact same thing as the attributed string when you want to look at the characters. You call this method mutable string. And it will return an NS mutable string. And believe it or not, if you modify that mutable string uh, that you get back, the mutable attributed string, its attributes will track your changes. So like if you insert some text, the, the new text will get the attributes of the character right where you inserted it. Okay? If you delete characters out of that mutable string, then the mutable attributed string, those character attributes will just go away. Make sense? So these classes, NS mutable string and NS mutable attributed string, are in bed with each other, and just like NS attributed string and NS string are in bed with each other, okay? I don't know how they did it at Apple, but it's really nice because it makes it really easy to manipulate both the characters and the attributes in an attributed string. 
Okay? Okay, so what kind of attributes are in those attributes dictionaries? Um, one of the big ones is the font. Okay? So this is a dictionary. The key for the font is NS font attribute name. Okay? And you can look up these keys by going and looking in NS. If you look up NS attributed string uh, in the documentation, there's a link there which is UI kit additions to NS attributed string. And all the keys that I'm going to talk about are there. And one of the keys is NS font attribute name. And the value of that is a UI font. So this is where you would get a preferred font of a certain style, like a headline, let's say, in this case. Okay? So if I had a dictionary that just had this in there, nothing, nothing else, the default text color is black, probably my letter A would look like that. Okay? What if I added this key value pair to my dictionary? NS foreground color attribute name, UI color blue color. So here the key is this foreground color attribute name, the value is a UI color. So that changed it to blue. Okay? And I could change it to green if I wanted to. Be a little bit careful when you create an attributed string that has colored text, because in iOS 7, the color of text sometimes is an indicator to the end user what they can touch. Okay? And so if you're, uh, it turns out apps in iOS kind of have a theme, a color theme. Uh, the default is blue, that's why our machismo, the uh, buttons that we make will be blue. Um, but they can be different colors, like orange. It depends on what tint you want your thing to be. But whatever your color is of your app, those, that color you can usually tap on. Okay, that's the color of text on buttons, text at the top of the screen that navigate places. So be careful not to set anything else to be that color unless you can tap on it. Okay, so be a little careful with color. Um, there's also stroke width attribute and stroke color. Um, the width attribute, and pay attention to this because you'll need this probably for your homework. Um, if that is a neg it's an NS number. If it's a negative NS number, then that means uh, fill uh, the glyph, you know, the A, fill it and stroke around the edge. If it's a positive number, it means just do the stroke around the edge and the middle is transparent. Okay? Um, what else can we have? Underline style attribute name. So that's an NS number that has an enum, one of NS underline style single or double, or there's also NS underline style none. That would be no underlining. Uh, there's also background color. So here, just to show you that this is possible, I set the background of this glyph to be a transparent yellow. Okay, it's 30% visible, 30% towards opaque. Uh, yellow. So you see how it's kind of, you can see the chalkboard throwing, showing through there. I don't know if that'll show up in iTunes U, but here you, hopefully you can see, I can see through that yellow background. Okay? Uh, in your homework, eh, you might want to think about using transparent colors somewhere else. Okay? Not the background of a character, well, maybe the fill color or something. Anyway, okay? So transparent colors, good. Okay, so hopefully you're all getting a feel then for how we build this dictionary. And okay, all we need to do is set the attributes of the characters that we want to have this particular set of attributes. Okay, so where do we use attributed strings? So I can create an attributed string. It's got 